I'm Dawn Garcia. I'm the president-elect of AIPG. And I'd especially like to give a warm welcome to Adam Heft, who will be our guest speaker. Adam um, is probably well known to many of the AIPG members. They, he has been a past president of AIPG. He's chair of um, this year's national conference. He's currently editor of the Professional Geologist. And he's been very involved in both the local Michigan section plus national um, activities for decades. Um, he's also a past recipient of one of our national awards. Um, Adam, I will let you introduce yourself, um, what more you'd like to, to say about your background, and also uh, invite you now to describe some of the activities and what we can expect for the upcoming conference. It sounds like a wonderful opportunity to enjoy some cool weather. Please, Thanks, go. Thanks Don. Um, definitely excited to, uh, to have everybody here in Michigan. Um, yes, Adam Heft. Um, I'm an environmental consultant here in Michigan. I work for WSP. Um, many of you may be familiar with the name, especially over the last uh, couple of years as we've uh, acquired other companies, Golder and looks like now Wood, uh, or at least a portion of them. And uh, been working all my life here in the Michigan area, although I have had projects elsewhere in the country. So as Don indicated, uh, I am the chairman of this year's uh, annual meeting and uh, national editor. So without any further ado, let me get into what you can expect for this year's annual meeting. Uh, if you are able to see my, uh, my desktop here, Marquette is along the shore of Lake Superior, central upper peninsula located here on the screen. Um, Lake Superior, as you may know, is the largest freshwater lake in the world by volume. And uh, it's, it's certainly, the, I think, the most beautiful of the Great Lakes. Um, you get a lot of interesting scenery all along the coast, uh, pictured rocks and some other things that uh, we'll talk about. Um, if you're flying into Marquette for the meeting, um, if you're flying directly to Marquette, you're going to be coming into uh, the K.I. Sawyer uh, Air Force Base uh, Airport, which is actually a little south of Marquette, about here. Uh, and then you'll be driving up into Marquette from there. Um, other possibilities, if you're still looking for options of how to get to Marquette, um, I've heard of different uh, members are going to be flying into perhaps Green Bay or even Duluth over in Minnesota and then driving from there. Um, of course, driving is, is certainly an option. Um, I know there's even uh, opportunities, I think, for... Uh, taking an Amtrak and uh, coming in via train. So there are a number of different options. You could also fly in downstate in Michigan uh, to some of the airports, uh, Grand Rapids, Lansing, even Detroit, I suppose, although it's quite a hike from, from downstate, uh, eight or 10 hour drive. So something to keep in mind. Um, as far as the, uh, the meeting information goes, the second quarter TPG issue, um, basically contained all the information about the meeting. Uh, so if you haven't read it, uh, be sure to do so. Have to uh, have a shameless plug here for TPG as the editor. And uh, speaking of TPG, in addition to the April, May, June edition, the next uh, edition, which is out electronically, um, big uh, announcement here is that it's in full color. So enjoy that and let me know what you think uh, of these uh, different issues. I, I want to hear from our members uh, as far as content and uh, presentation and all that kind of thing. The cover of this uh, particular edition is the old ore dock in Marquette and this is one of the uh, places that you can uh, go see while you're uh, attending the annual meeting. The national website uh, has got the conference information also on it. Uh, pretty much everything that's that's uh, been set up is is here. We've got the schedule, list of sponsors and exhibitors, all the technical presentations, um, and you know the abstracts are here. You got a spot to go and register, and then uh, the room blocks are listed for three different hotels. Now, those have expired. 
um, but the hotels are still listed and the contact information is there. So you can potentially uh, either, you know, uh, book into one of those hotels or, or find another one. Um, another option, if you're driving, there are a few of our members, I think, that uh, are going to do it, uh, I guess, kind of on the cheap and, uh, and camp, which is certainly a good thing. You know, if you've got uh, your own RV or whatever, uh, there are a number of campgrounds. So that certainly is an option as far as where to stay and, and you know, where to be. So, if you've never been to one of the annual meetings before, um, I'll give you a little bit of an idea of what goes on. The first day, uh, in this case, Saturday, the 6th of August, is primarily the business meetings. Um, the National Executive Committee meets uh, the morning of uh, Saturday. And later in the afternoon, we've got uh, additional meetings, the advisory board, um, you know, the first one where they report on what has uh, uh, been reported talking to all the different sections uh, across the country. And then the second advisory board meeting uh, is for the incoming advisory board where elections are held for the advisory board delegates to the executive committee. And then the, the fourth meeting of the day, uh, you have the incoming, uh, joint incoming outgoing executive committee meeting um, and then the foundation of AIPG meets uh, after all these meetings are complete. At the same time during the day, um, students uh, have kind of a, a parallel uh, set of activities. And that includes a number of different things, typically uh, assistance with resume building. I know they plan to talk about uh, preparation for the ASBOG exam for the students and uh, a number of other things. So. Uh, if you're a student uh, that's on the call, and I don't know, are there any students? If, if there are, can you raise your hand? Not seeing any. Okay. So basically, this is what's going on on Saturday. Sunday, um, the primary uh, events are field trips. And we've got three for Sunday, there will be three more uh, later in the meeting, but to start, we've got these three. And basically, I'll give you a little bit of a flavor here. First one is to the Eagle Mine, and this is the world-class uh, state-of-the-art facility that was most recently permitted in Michigan. I think about 10 years ago, uh, they started operating. And this is a picture on the left of the mine site about 40 acres. And then on the left, there's also the mill that's associated with this facility. You'll get to see both. Um, this particular trip is technically right now closed registration. We've reached the maximum number of participants. However, I do believe that there is a meeting list, excuse me, a waiting list uh, in case there are any last minute cancellations. Um, one of the things that I've been told to mention, if you are uh, attending this particular trip, plan on bringing safety gear uh, to help out. Uh, there will be some available, but if you have them, uh, plan on bringing safety glasses, uh, safety vest, hard hat, and steel-toed steel -toed boots. Um, it's better to have your own uh, than someone else's, certainly. So this will be an all-day trip. Um, one of the, the Real neat things that you'll get to see and do is you will get a chance to pick over the high grade ore uh, that's stored in the ore building uh, as part of the field trip. So there is a collecting opportunity here. Second trip is uh, what's called the minerals and falling water. Um, the morning portion, uh, we'll be exploring some of the Marquette area waterfalls and the geology associated with them. You get to see some of the Precambrian bedrock in the area. And Marquette, uh, the Marquette area in general, uh, has some of the oldest uh, bedrock, not just in Michigan, certainly, which it is, but also um, almost anywhere. The oldest of the bedrock dates back to about, I believe it's 3.2 billion years old, um, although most of it is 2.2 two to 2.7 uh, billion years. 
So it will have the uh, number of waterfalls in the morning. And in the afternoon uh, is the minerals portion. Um, I'm actually co-leading this trip. Um, we're planning to go to one of the old uh, iron mines in the Marquette district. Uh, in fact, the far west portion of the district, the Champion Mine. And from there, uh, we'll have opportunity to spend a few hours uh, basically searching the rock piles or different uh, minerals. There's a number of different minerals that have been uh, identified at this location. Uh, this is in the starlight grade metamorphic node. And then from Champion, we're going to make a stop at Jasper Knob and you'll get to see uh, some highly, highly contorted banded iron formation. Very interesting location. Third trip on Sunday is the historic iron mining trip. And there is a pair of museums, the Michigan National Iron Mining Museum and the Cliff Shaft Museum. Um, both of these you get the opportunity to see. I'm told also that um, lunch will be in uh, uh, one of the parks locally. And uh, you may get a chance to see um, the Jackson mine, uh, which was the, the very first iron mine uh, in the Marquette district. Uh, some of the, the kind of surface features, uh, what's left from, from that, it's along the historic iron mining trail. So we'll have that and uh, a miner's lunch in the park, uh, get to sample pasties. If you've never had one, they're good, you'll enjoy it. Sunday evening, uh, is the icebreaker and it's going to be from 6.30 to 8.30. Exhibit space will be open, but the, uh, the big attraction for this also is going to be the silent auction, which benefits the AIPG Foundation. We've got a number of different items uh, already that have been donated uh, for the silent auction. And uh, I'm told there will be more um, that aren't officially in yet. So there will be a number of different things up uh, up for auction, so bring your checkbook. Um, just as a kind of a teaser, here's a few of the items that we've got uh, already laid in. Uh, we've got a sample of crystalline copper from the Keweenaw. We've got a, uh, an amethyst cathedral from Brazil. Some cobaltine, cobaltine uh, calcite. Not sure where that's located. That was not specified. And we also have a set of bookends of the high-grade uh, nickel copper ore from the Eagle Mine. Uh, this is something that's going to be in limited supply once the mine closes, and that's anticipated to be probably within the next four or five years uh, as the Eagle East deposit is depleted. Uh, there will be no further opportunity for uh, obtaining this uh, material. So something to think about. Monday. Um, we're doing something a little different this year. Um, Monday is going to be solely for the technical sessions. There will be no uh, field trips run this particular day. Although for those of you that are only interested in the field trips, don't worry, we've got uh, kind of a something for you as well. Um, but there's about 40, 42, I think, uh, technical presentations. And we have a two hour ethics short course that will be presented by Sarah Pearson and Jessica Davey. So, there's going to be pretty much something for everyone, a wide variety of different topics and different technical presentations uh, in all specialties of geology. So plan on uh, a good day of, of in-house learning. Now, for, for those individuals, like I say, that, that don't want to sit through a technical session, well, we do have a couple other things that are uh, possibilities for you. One... Uh, one of our members has uh, volunteered to in lead an informal group on a bicycle tour along the historic Iron Trail uh, in Nagani and Ishpeming. And th that will be in the morning. We'll have information up. Um, I believe we'll have the, the Whova app again, and that should be coming online here probably shortly, right, Kathy? That's correct. Okay, yeah, and we'll, we'll post uh, the contact information if that's something you're interested in. Um, that's a fairly sedate uh, event, you know, if, for those uh, individuals that like a little bit more of a challenge when they're on a bicycle, um, there are certainly mountain bike trails uh, in the Marquette area. And if uh, you're looking for something uh, fairly rigorous, there are a number of different ones. Um, 
you could bike up Mount Menard. Uh, there's certain other ones. Uh, was it? I think the Do the Down Dogger Trail, um, and uh, I think even Sugarloaf you can bike up. So there are a number of different uh, options there. As far as uh, self-guided tours, we've got a list, and this is currently on the conference website on the registration page. However, we will have a few hard copies kicking around at the registration table as well for those that are interested. Um, nearby uh, locations that members can go to on their own and uh, basically explore at their own pace different uh, locations of geologic interest. Some of those uh, just off the top of my head include, uh, again, different Marquette waterfall area, you know, area waterfalls. Uh, there's fossil collecting in the Stonington Peninsula. You could go over to Pictured Rocks on your own. Um, and and there's, there's a number of other ones, uh, but we'll have all that information available for you. Tuesday uh, is the final official day of the annual meeting. We have three additional field trips for you uh, on this particular day. First one is to Pictured Rocks. Uh, this is over in the Munising area. And Pictured Rocks, as some of you may know, was the first national lake shore uh, established. I think it was by Lind President Lyndon Johnson um, a number of years ago. But we've got, uh, for this particular trip, you'll get to see features on land as well as by boat. Uh, there's a plan for a three-hour boat trip so that you can see the uh, the sandstone cliffs from the water, which is a great way to do it. Uh, and you'll see why they call it pictured rocks from all the mineral staining that extend down the, uh, the cliffs uh, where groundwater seeps out. And if you're really fortunate, uh, or maybe it would be unfortunate, I don't know, um, there have been the occasional cliff collapses and uh, you might catch one of those on, uh, on camera. Second trip. Tuesday is to the Tilden mine. This is the large open pit mine, uh, still active in, in, uh, in the Upper Peninsula. It, I think op it first opened, I wanna say in the 1960s and has been operating ever since. But this is the traditional type of mine that has been uh, thought of when people hear the word mining, at least in Michigan. You know, you've got this big open pit and it looks awful. Um, you know, you've, you've got, uh, you know, your wastewater and, and so forth, uh, the, you know, coming off of this. It's, it's quite a contrast to the way that the Eagle Mine currently operates. And the third uh, trip is to, uh, it's a two-day trip to the Keweenaw Peninsula. Um, not all of the stops have been fully identified. However, I do know that uh, the primary attractions will include the Quincy mine and there will be an above ground and an underground portion to this. Um, you also get to see, I think the smelter associated with it. Other locations include, uh, I believe they're gonna make a stop at the Seaman Mineral Museum in Houghton. And uh, this picture on the right is, is a picture of the 22 ton piece of float copper that was recovered from Lake Superior uh, just a few years ago and now resides uh, in the pavilion at the, the location. But the Seaman Museum has got world-class uh, mineral exhibits that rival or even, I think, exceed what you get at the Smithsonian. So you'll, you'll definitely enjoy that. And you could spend all day uh, just looking at this location. And then there will be a few other locations uh, throughout the Keweenaw uh, looking at different uh, formations, the Copper Harbor Conglomerate, uh, the Portage Lake Volcanics. I'm told that they plan to make a stop if uh, uh, they can find one and, and time allows uh, for some copper collecting, uh, one of the old uh, tailings piles as well. So that will be an interesting trip. And then as far as other things, um, this is something that uh, we put together, and this is kind of a summary of, you know, places to go and things to do. Um, in addition to the, the uh, structured trips, 
there's there's a number of other things that you can do while you're in the you know market area. Hopefully, you'll take some additional time and turn it into a family vacation. Um, but certainly, we have waterfalls, including Tequamanon, which is pictured here in the center. Uh, it's the largest waterfall east of the Mississippi. You can go cliff jumping in Marquette uh, at the city park, Presque Isle Park. You can jump from the Black Rocks. It's cliffs about 10 to 15 feet high. Uh, it's not too bad. You can hike or kayak along pictured rocks um, in addition to you know, the field trip that uh, is being led there. You could go further east, uh, stop at Whitefish Point in the Great Lake Shipwreck Museum. Uh, Main attraction there is uh, the recovered uh, ship's bell from the Edmund Fitzgerald. You can go south and uh, uh, go see Kitch Itty Kippy, which is this upper left photograph. Um, there's, it's basically, it's a spring fed lake uh, that ultimately discharges to Lake Michigan, but there's 40,000 gallons of crystal clear uh, water come out of the, the bedrock every minute. Um, and it stirs up the, the silt on the bottom like a little volcanic eruption. So it's, it's quite interesting. And if, of course, the fish there are salmon. Uh, they don't look very big, but the water here is 40 feet deep. So they're actually pretty sizable. You can go fossil collecting down in the Stonington Peninsula or search for the elusive uperlites uh, along the Lake Superior shoreline. There's a number of different places you can go. Bring your black lights and uh, you can do that in the evening or at night. Uh, for something a little more off the, uh, the usual, uh, visit Paulding, Michigan and uh, see if the ghostly Paulding lights will appear for you. Um, that's something I haven't actually had the opportunity to do. Um, but a number of people have, and they, they swear they see them. Um, you can also go up into the Keweenaw on your own and spend, gosh, as much time as you wanted uh, hunting for native copper. Um, there's a lot of really nice trails. Uh, you could go all the way up by Copper Harbor, Estevant Pines. Uh, there's a number of different waterfalls that you can check out. Um, basically something for everyone. And of course, as I mentioned, you can uh, bike trails along Lake Superior uh, or even go fishing on uh, Lake Superior. So a lot of opportunities uh, for things to do uh, in addition to the, the structure of the meeting itself. Does anyone have any questions? Thank you so much, Adam. That, the, your photos were wonderful. That's a, a great presentation. It certainly uh, helps me know what's, uh, what to expect. Um, say you mentioned this, the student activities, will that also include the early career professionals in that day? I believe it does. Yes. Okay, great. And, um, the format of the, the Monday where we're all together for technical sessions, um, is there a plenary talk or? There is. In fact, I'm glad that you, you mentioned that. Yes. Um, our, the Michigan state geologist, uh, will be presenting the plenary talk. Uh, in the morning, um, right after we get going. And then over the lunchtime, we'll also have uh, the keynote address um, by another AIPG member who uh, formerly was the lead exploration geologist for the Eagle Mine. Uh, we'll be talking about um, metallic uh, ore deposits in the Upper Peninsula. Oh, excellent. And our, um, I assume the lunch is included with our registration fee. Yes. For that day. Okay. Yes. So wonderful. Tell us a little bit about that weather, weather in Upper Peninsula, and not just the weather, but should I bring bug spray? <laughs> yes. Um, weather, the weather is going to vary. Um, you know, this time of year, it's generally very nice. Um, it could be you know, in the 80s, could be down into the 60s, depending on which way the wind is blowing. Um, for those going on the pictured rocks trip, um, it's probably going to be cool on the lake shore, definitely. So, you know, bring something to cover up with. But when you're, you know, inland a ways, uh, it's definitely going to be warm. As far as the bugs go, yeah, you're going to want some type of bug spray. And I would go beyond just uh, your, your standard off or even the deep woods off. We kind of refer to that as perfume for the local mosquitoes. Um, 
I would get something a little stronger than that. We typically will wear the 100% DEET uh, when we're out there for any great length of time. Now for the field trips, it may not be as big of an issue. Um, it'd be in and out of the vans. Um, and for some of them where you're, you know, like at the Tilden mine, you're in a pit, bugs probably are not gonna be an issue there. Uh, at the Champion mine, you've got the, the rock piles, Midday, again, probably not going to be too bad. Um, pictured rock, same kind of thing. So most of those, I, I wouldn't worry too much about it. But if you're off on your own, uh, particularly if, if you're walking the back trails, at, well, you know, then you may want. Uh, there's, there's the potential as well for ticks. Um, it varies from year to year. I don't know uh, this year what the report is as far as how many they're seeing. It seems like it's typically earlier in the year that they're, they're more uh, prevalent than in August. They may be gone, they may not be. Uh, one year, about 10 years ago, I was up there with my kids and uh, you know, we hiked the trail in to a waterfall and back and picked up a number of them. Um, so it is a possibility. Sounds like, um, yes, yeah, part of our health and safety during the, the field trip activities, we should remind everybody to do a, a, a scan. Yeah. And tick check. Back to their hotel room. Yep. <laughs> Make sure they uh, take away any uh, hitchhikers there. Exactly. Okay. Um, how about sample bags? If we're going to be allowed, um, say at the Eagle mine to do a little uh, browsing through the, uh, the free yep. samples, bring our own yep. sample bags. Yes, um, that's something else that uh, we may have. Michigan has got a number of uh, actual sample bags. Um, we may have some of those along uh, for, for participants. So um, that's a possibility, but certainly if you have uh, you know, something that uh, you want to, to carry, uh, I believe when we've gone to the Eagle Mine in the past, it's if you can carry it out, uh, you can take it, uh, bearing in mind that that may be at the beginning of the, the mine trip. And then you've got the rest of the tour that you've got to carry it. So it's not a chance to just, you know, grab it, go put it back in the, in the, uh, in the bus and then, uh, you know, continue on. It's, you know, you go from point A to point B all the way along the tour. And uh, that's something to keep in mind that you, you'll have to carry it until you're done. Okay. All right. It's like traveling with luggage. Yep. All right, I will be prepared. Thanks for that tip. Say so, what are you looking forward to most of all with all these different activities? Boy, that's a good question. Um, you know, I'm certainly looking forward to seeing everybody in Michigan. Uh, it's been 15 years since the last time Michigan hosted a meeting. That was in Traverse City. Um, Certainly, the, you know, the, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how all the, the technical sessions uh, shake out. Um, I'm presenting one myself, and uh, hopefully that will go smoothly. Um, the field trips should be great. Uh, we're just hoping that everybody has a, a fantastic time and, and enjoys a little Michigan hospitality. Wonderful. So, um any advice you'd give to um, our 2023 planning committee when they're thinking about putting together next year's uh, planning? What was it like for you to do this, uh, being chair and, and for your planning committee to put all this stuff together? Well, certainly, um, you know, it, it's a matter of a lot of coordination. Um, you need a dedicated group, particularly for the field trips. Um, we had uh, three individuals that did the primary planning for it. Um, one in particular, Alan Blasky, uh, is our field trip chair, and he did a lot of the compilation of, of the information and made the contacts at the different locations to set up the trips. Um, that's going to be key, is, is making sure that you've got that all in order. Um, you also need to have a dedicated group working on potential sponsors and exhibitors. Um, and it, it comes down to a lot of it. I mean, you, you will get some repeat um, entities from past years, but a lot of it comes down to the local area and who the planning committee members know. Um, you know, use your relationships and basically, you know, 
maybe lean on some of the companies that you do business with and suggest that, hey, you know, this is something that you're going to want to do, be part of this. Um, especially once, uh, you know, you get a, a few of them online and, uh, you know, their logos and so forth are posted on the conference website. I had a, an issue where just a couple of weeks ago at the Michigan Section Environmental Risk Management Workshop, I was talking with a number of folks about it and a couple of them were, hey, I'm not sure about it this year. We're thinking probably not. And then I showed them who else was already signed up and on that website. And they, they changed their mind. They said, oh, I'm kind of feeling left out now. And I checked today and lo and behold, they're, they're uh, also in there. So. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, you know, it always helps to know who else is going, any of my buddies or any of my clients. Exactly. Going, then I want to be there too. And um, I came back from the Prospectors and Developers Association of Canada meeting recently, and people are so happy to see each other again in person. Mm -hmm. um, so for AIPG members, it will be just great to actually have a big group there again. Yes. To, to catch up with colleagues and friends. So I know I'm very much looking forward to this. Hey, Don and, and Adam, it's Mark Shop. <clears throat> Just to get maybe some, some thoughts going and questions. Is there going to be a, an AIPG announcement ahead of the annual meeting about uh, some of the things that you mentioned, Adam, for, you know, for those that are arriving earlier? Or making a full week out of it that, that are sticking around. Is there going to be like an information page? And is that going to be posted on AIPG's website? And will there be an announcement when that is, uh, you know, first? Yeah, month yeah, th there is. Um, in fact, I'm going to try to get the uh, information in the chat here uh, while we're talking. Um, but the conference website page does have some of that information on it already. Um, you know some of the the events that I mentioned, and I'm gonna I'm gonna right now put this other stuff in uh, so that you'll have that as well. But certainly, if there's any you know any questions specifically to any of these, um, certainly give me a holler. And uh, Mark, I would problems. also suggest um, when the Hoover app is available that you use that because I've um, heard from some others who are planning to drive and make a vacation out of this uh, combination professional event plus opportunity to be in the cool northern climate. This is a yearly AIPG, right? Yep. So. Technical difficulties here. I'm not for some reason able to paste the stuff in. It depends sometimes on um, how this how this is done, but that's okay. If it doesn't um, paste in easily, then we can have this sent out as part of an update to an email. Any yeah. other questions? Okay, here we go. It was just too long. I'll do it in pieces. Well, I don't hear any other questions. Um, Adam, thank you so much. That was really a nice presentation. It, was there another question? I think that might have just been some extra stuff in the background. Okay, so thank you again, Adam. It's very you much bet. appreciated your time. Yeah, the information is now in the chat in several pieces. Uh, that was the problem. It was just too big to put all at once. So uh, there's the list. Feel free to email me. Um, let me know if you have any questions about it. And like I said, I'd like to hear from the members, uh, you know, what you think. Um, both about the meeting and about t uh, issues of TPG. Yes, and send articles. Mm -hmm. We need content. <laughs> the executive committee had our um, quarterly board meeting recently and reports were made by various officers and advisory board members. So all of those types of meetings are open to our membership. There will be another board meeting coming up as part of the annual meeting. That was what Adam was mentioning is on Saturday, August 6th. So please, if, um, if you have the time and the interest, come join us at that meeting and see all of the background activity that's going on. One of the, the things that came up in that meeting is um, membership and uh, NR projected and forecasted expenses for the future. 
And I've asked uh, Aaron Johnson, who is our executive director, to talk a little bit about um, the discussion that we had for a dues increase. Thank you, Don. Um, I apologize for being a little late to the meeting today. I, I missed the first few minutes after I had a computer issue. Um, I'm, I'm on the road right now, so I'm stopped on the side of the road um, using my hotspot and my internet. I've also had a little bit of laryngitis. I might sound a little hoarse, so I'm going to I'm going to try to keep this fairly brief. Um, when I came into AIPG in 2016, one of the things that I noticed was that we had a pretty regular history of year-over-year dues increase, increases. Um, and one of the things that I really wanted to look at was how we could begin to think about our dues increases on a, a schedule that wouldn't make you feel like you were getting hit with an increase every year. Uh, so we, we looked at how we could do projections and project our expenses, um, how we could control expenses, of course, and how we used your dollars to support the mission of AIPG and to support the broader profession. And as part of that, we, we looked at maybe a three-year schedule where about every three years, we'd re-examine all of those numbers and determine if a dues increase was going to be necessary. Uh, the first, one of those occurred in 2020. We increased dues in 20, so the dues that then had been held steady for 2020, 21, and 22. And as we started to look at the numbers and as we looked at increases in the costs of doing business in Denver broadly, even with the pandemic, and of course now with our surging inflation rates, I think we all on the executive committee agree that a, a dues increase is going to be necessary. And what we're looking at is how do we project our expenses? How do we um, reduce costs wherever we can? How do we continue to spend your money as wisely as we can? Um, and at the same time, ensure that when we make this decision, we don't have to come back to you next year or the year after with our with our kind of our hat in our hands and a little bit of an apology saying we we miss we miscalculated. So. We're working on that right now. Um, we don't know exactly what that number is going to be, um, but I do know that the cost of doing business in Denver has gone up by about seven and a half percent so far this year. Uh, so we're going to have to try to anticipate how those increases are going to uh, come into effect. I've been uh, looking at economic development forecasts here in Denver and looking at some of the local chamber of commerce numbers and really trying to get a handle on that. But we want you to understand and we want to be very open and honest that we don't take this lightly. Um, this is an important topic. It impacts all of us in a time of financial uncertainty. Uh, so we'll, we'll be very diligent with our efforts to make this an intelligent decision that best serves our members and best serves the organization. Um, Dave uh, Heidloff, our treasurer, has done a fantastic job of really asking some questions about where we might find previously undiscovered savings. Uh, and so we're looking into a couple of those areas. Um, we've just recently uh, looked into renewing some of our office contracts. And I think we have a little savings that we can realize there. Um, but as with many service organizations, and we, we are primarily a service organization, our biggest expenditure is on the people that make our organization run in the office. So we do want to acknowledge to all of our employees that their costs are increasing too. And we hope to be able to ensure that we continue to be able to match that increase in the cost of living in Denver with our increases to, to help our employees um, offset that cost, whether that's through increases in salary or whether it's through the choice to maybe offer bonus vacation time. We're looking at every option that's on the table. So if you have experience in this area and, and you have some thoughts, please feel free, free to share them with me. If you're not comfortable sharing them with me, share them with Don, with Matt Rhodes, with any member of the executive committee. Um, we, we take all of your advice and expertise um, to heart because we know that you bring a perspective to the table that probably comes from a unique set of experiences. And we want to make sure that we use every um, tool in our toolbox as we approach what is, I think, going to be a challenging couple of years in the face of some of the changes we're seeing in the economy and in the industry. Um, 
Other than that, I don't have a lot of specifics with respect to the dues increase, but I anticipate uh, dues right now are $185 a year. And I anticipate that an increase that would address the next three years would be at minimum, at a, at a bare minimum, probably, um, boy, that's a good, that's a, that's a good question. At least 5% and perhaps more, um, 5% increase would be about $9. And I'd say that's probably not going to be enough. So it could even be a 10% increase that we might see, but I just don't have those numbers yet. Um, we're working diligently on that. And I'm trying to do that in consultation with Dave Heidloff and, and with a couple of other um, members of AIPG that have some deep experience in terms of our long-term financial health. Thank you very much for that analysis, Aaron. Um, that's really helpful to know that this is uh, in the works and that we should be expecting something to be happening. And, and there'll undoubtedly be quite a bit of discussion in August about this very issue. Yeah, I just want to add also, I know uh, Matt Rhodes, our current president, and of course, um, I and I myself, we're both very much interested in seeing about growing our membership. And so all of this is a balancing act between we need more members to make up for our um, increased costs, but yet, you know, adding value to what our members get out of their their um, their fee in, in AIPG membership. So lots of different issues to look at and uh, it, it is a complicated um, complicated subject for everyone. There, there are a lot of moving parts here. I think that's part of it because as the economy, it's still not settled. So we don't know how far these sliders are gonna slide. I've, I've seen some predictions that in November our our inflation rate could be up to 9% and then we might, might see that drop off. But we just don't know what that might look like. And so that's part of our moving target. Don, you also brought up another very, to me anyway, a very important subject. And, and that's the idea of increasing membership. And in my experience, and this is just what I've observed personally, so it's, uh, it's anecdotal, but the very best recruiters for AIPG are you guys, our CPGs that can talk to their colleagues and talk to junior geologists wow. and wow. communicate to them the value that this organization has brought to them over their careers, that's the very best advertising for us. And, and I truly appreciate all the work that each of you do to um, share the influence that AIPG can have, the positive impact we can have on geologists and on geologists' careers. Thank you. Say, we have a couple of hands up. Uh, John and Sarah Jens, you had your hand up first. Thank you, Don. Nice to see you, even though far away. Um, and I know I'm just an associate member, but I do have a question and a comment. First of all, um, although I love print copy, I'm kind of old fashioned that way. It's really neat to see the magazine online. I can look at things as I like to. So I guess the question ha is, and you probably already thought of it, um, I'm wondering how much possibly the print issue might be decreased. Some people, like I say, still like the print. I do myself. But I'm wondering if that's a factor that has all gone into consideration for saving some money. Yeah, we, we have definitely looked at that issue more than once in my uh, membership lifetime. And we last looked at it, um, I think it was like 2019. It was just before COVID that we, we surveyed the membership to, to ask, you know, all digital, all print or a combination. And people, a lot of people still like that print copy. And I, I confess, I like the print copy myself. It's, it's, um, it's so much easier to travel with the print copy as opposed to trying to do it digital, electronically off of my smartphone on a plane and stuff like that. So. So far, the membership has requested that we keep it still um, as a print. But we also provide it digitally for those who are used. And, and you know, maybe in the future when there are um, more people who prefer digital, we'll go strictly to digital. So okay. thanks for that question, Sarah. Um, Mark, Mark Schaff, you have a question? 
Yeah, for Aaron, uh, have you had a chance yet, Aaron, to talk with some of your colleagues um, in other similar organizations on how they're dealing with the current inflation situation and then and similar increase in dues. Is that kind of happening across the board or have you not had a chance to, to check in with some of your counterparts? Uh, everyone is facing some of the similar challenges. I know I, I've seen a couple of surveys that came from Dave Kanagy, um and SME is in a similar uh, situation. They have some larger endowments than we do so they can defray some of those costs. Um, the leadership at the Geological Society of America is in flux. Uh, the last that I knew, they were still in the midst of their search. And so um, I, I don't know how they're addressing that. Uh, Vicki is still planning to be finished in September. So I think that hot potato is going to fall into the hands of whoever is selected as the next executive director. And of course, AAPG has been facing this issue for years now in the face of the membership because of the, the hit that the petroleum industry had been taking, although that seems to have really leveled off in the last six months or so. So I'm not sure that there's a direct analogy to what we're facing right now in the U.S., um, but I've certainly started to test those waters a little bit and see. ASBOG would be another example, but with ASBOG, it's the state boards that are the members. They don't have individual memberships. So each of the organizations is just different enough that it's hard to draw a direct comparison. Any other questions or comments? Any hands that I might have missed? Thanks again, Aaron. Much appreciate your time. If I could, um, just very quickly. First, Don, I want to thank you for coming up with the idea of the town halls. I think it's been a tremendous positive for us so far. Um, and I, may, I, I don't intend to speak out of turn here, but if any of you that are attending have questions or comments or topics that you would like to see us address, please feel free to share them with me and Don and, and Matt and I will talk through those topics and, and that will help us plan to address the concerns you have. And that's really what we're trying to do here is to help you be more connected and to make sure that our members really have an opportunity to get their concerns and ideas in front of us. So thank you, Don, for all the hard work that you do. Thank you, Adam and Mark Schaff and everyone so far that's participated. I truly appreciate it. Folks, next month we have a, a town hall that's scheduled for July 18th. It's gonna be at the same time as this one, the five to 6 p.m. Eastern. Um, and we're gonna shake things up a little bit by having a technical talk. So uh, Mark Rogers and, and uh, Mark Schaff said, hey, how about a technical talk? We're ready for a technical talk. and. Um, Folks may know that we have a speakers list in AIPG, and one of our speakers is Steve Stokowski. He is um, treasurer of the Georgia section this year, but a longtime AIPG CPG member, and he does a lot of, um, uh, I guess I'd say industrial stone. So he's going to give a uh, talk about a cracked dimension stone that was in place at a World War II memorial. Uh, it's entitled Black Granite from Hell. And in, it was about the, um, the rock that was installed for this memorial. And it rained and they found out that that rock was not as competent as they expected it to be. So. Um, the black granite from hell, everything was great. And then all hell broke loose when it rained just before the final inspection. And again, please mark your calendars for July 18th. So um, we are also anticipating having a, uh, a session that will be geared towards students and early career professionals talking about our mentoring program and other things that are important to that, um, that group within AIPG. And that's either going to be uh, September or October. And Mark Rogers and Mark Schaff are going to be leading that one. Any other comments, hand raises? I'm just full of questions, Don. It's Mark Shaw again. And I just thought, like, I don't know if this one was recorded. Are, are these recorded? Because I won't be able to make the next one. And I kind of want to hear the technical talk and kind of what happened um, in that story that we just shared. 
Are these uh, recorded and then is there again an email that's sent out for our link for people that couldn't make it that might want to listen to uh, the town hall after the fact? Yes, they are recorded. And um, Kathy started the recording of this one um, just as we started. And we've already talked about making sure we record Steve's talk in July also. Um, Kathy, if you have a chance, maybe you could also um, throw in the chat where those recordings live. They, I, they will eventually be uploaded to the AIPG YouTube channel that is on our to-do list to get started with this week, getting those uploaded and available. Ah, there we go. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. So, and, and everyone, if you ever do need a, a speaker, um, please just ask uh, headquarters for a copy of our list of uh, speakers, people who have already prepared talks. They have their, their um, abstracts. They've got timelines of how long a talk will be, et cetera, et cetera. It's all laid out and very easy to get one of those folks to, to do one for your own section. Or, or any other group that may need an AIPG member to uh, give a technical talk. Okay, well, thanks very much for joining us today. Thank you again, Adam, for that wonderful um, kind of teaser about what to expect in Marquette. Um, we are very much looking forward to that meeting. Appreciate all the work that you and the committee are doing on that. Everyone have a great holiday weekend and be safe over the 4th.